Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all his fear. Verse 5, they look upon him and were lightened, and their face were not ashamed. Amen. And like verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusts in him. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his word. Amen. 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 Oh, gracious Father, we bow once again, Lord, saying thank you. Father God, thanking you, Lord, for last night laying down on earth this morning rising. Father God, we just want to say thank you one more time. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us covered, Lord. Father God, we just want to say thank you for, for who you are in our life, Lord. Oh, God, you've been so good to us, and we just want to say thank you. Father God, we don't take you for granted, Lord, but we just want to give you praise on this minute and this hour. Father God, we don't know what the next hour holds for, but Lord, we want to lift you up and praise you on this minute. Oh, God, we just want to say thank you because you're worthy to be praised. We thank you, Lord. Oh, God, we thank you. We ask you to rain on us with your Holy Spirit this morning. Oh God, just rain on us. Any way that you want to bless us, Lord, we'll be satisfied. Father God, we just want to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the sun. We thank you, Lord, for all of keeping us covered, Lord. Father God, we ask you right now to bless this service, Lord. Have it to be what you are having to be, Lord. Father God, because we can't do anything without you, Lord. Stir it up, Lord. We can't pray, we can't sing without you. Father God, we just say thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless each and every member of the temple this morning, Lord. Touch God that's here, touch God that's not, Lord. Father God, we ask you right now, someone needs you this morning. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for a healing touch, Lord. Father God, we just want to say thank you. Oh God, you carried us all week long. Oh God, we just so grateful and we thank you. Oh God, right now, someone restore joy right now. Give them peace, Lord. Father God, we just want to say thank you. We ask you to continue to bless our pastor, Lord. Strengthen him, Lord. Father God, we ask you to bless the one that's going to preach your word this morning. Touch him right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father God, because we can't do nothing without you. We want to give you all the praise and all the honor, Lord. And we thank you. Father God, we ask you to look on each and every church that's set over in your name and proclaiming your word this morning. Touch you right now. Father God, continue to bless our children. Bless our children. They're going in and they're coming out, Lord. Keep your arms surrounding them, Lord. Father God, we ask you to bless the teachers, Lord. Touch them right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh God, Father God, when we have done all that we can do on this side, Father God, we ask you to give us a place just anywhere. In Jesus' name we pray. And let the church say amen.
chapter 16, verses 12 and 13. And I will reference Samuel 17, 28, 29, 33, and 37. Amen. And it reads, so he went, so he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy with beautiful eyes and had a handsome appearance. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. Verse 13, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brothers. And the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David. From that day, from that day forward, Samuel arose and went to Ramah. Amen. You may be seated. And we have a title for today. The anointing makes a difference. The anointing makes a difference. Look at your neighbor and tell them the anointing makes a difference. In the Bible, the anointing is often used to describe the process of consecrating someone or something for a specific purpose. It can also refer to the process or the presence of God that is given to someone in order to enable them to fulfill their call. The word anoint comes from the Hebrew word masa, which means to pour out, rub on, to smear or to saturate. For an example, in Psalms 133, which it describes how Aaron was anointed as high priest for Israel, in verse 2 reads like this, it is like the precious oil upon the head running down on the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garment. It describes Aaron as being immersed or covered by the oil. But we understand that uh, that God often, he will anoint uh, certain people for things that he needs. Amen. Yeah. He, he will anoint them uh, to carry out his purpose. Yeah. Yeah. He will anoint them to be able to carry out the process that he has for them. Yeah. So let's look at uh, the anointing in the Old Testament versus the New Testament. In the Old Testament, anointing was used as a sign of consecration or an appointment to a specific task or office, such as kings, prophets, priests were anointed with oil, symbolizing God's blessing and their protection. God also, uh, as an example, in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1, it reads, The Spirit of the Lord came upon me, because the Lord anointed me to preach the tithing unto the meek. Yeah, yeah. He sent me to bind up the broken heart to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to them that are bound. Mm -hmm. He anointed Isaiah for a specific task. Yeah, yeah. Uh, God also anointed Jeremiah in chapter 1, yeah. verse 5, and it reads, In his sovereignty, God chose Jeremiah, before he was born, to be his prophet. Yeah, right. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. Yeah, yeah. I, set, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. God anointed him before he was even before he even existed. Yeah. A lot of us we have to understand on, that God. in the Old Testament, God used the anointing to carry out his purpose. Amen? Yeah. So we see him talking about Jeremiah and the same thing with some of us. Some of you might not know God had anointed you to do something before you were even born. Amen? Yeah. And you're wondering why you carry around this burden uh, or calling that God gives you, but the problem is most of us, we ignore that calling. Amen? Yeah. It's just like uh, uh, God has called his church to be uh, different parts to come together to be able to operate. Amen. Mm -hmm. But it's just like an engine or a motor. Yeah. If God has called you to be the battery, but he called me to be the, 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 uh, the, the what do you call those you put on the battery? Oh, yeah. the, the, 
the terminal, the terminal, uh, the battery cables. Yeah. If he calls you to be battery, it needs to be the cables for us to connect together yeah. for the car can start. Amen. Yeah. But a lot of times God has called us in the church to be able to, to, to carry out his process, but a part of the motor is not operating. Amen. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter how big the church is. It doesn't matter how large the church is. You can have seven people in the church, but if they're all connecting together, amen, you can carry out God's purpose. But we always find in the church with somebody who, who doesn't want to be a part of the motor. Amen. Yeah. They, they have the call. They have been anointed by God to carry out this process. But we worry about what people say. We worry about what people, uh, they're gonna, how they're going to look at us and how they're going to treat us. But we have to worry about carrying out God's process. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says that the Lord reached out and he touched Jeremiah's lips, thus putting the words in the, in the mouth of the prophet. So that lets me know that when you stand and then you are in anointing or, or in walking in God's will, don't worry about what to say. Amen. God will give you what to say. Amen. It might not sound like me. It might not sound like Pastor Cunningham. It might not sound like T.D. Jakes, but it doesn't matter because God has put the words in your mouth. Amen. So what I'm trying to say is don't worry about what, what, what people think or what people say. Do what God has called you to do. He has anointed you to do something he gave you a, a, a different task and he gave Brother Mosley. Amen. Yeah. He, he, he gave you a different task and he gave Deacon Steve. Amen. So we have to be able to work together and follow out God's will. Yeah. But how did the, the anointing work in the New Testament? In the New Testament, Jesus Christ reveals himself as our anointed king, yeah. our priest, our prophet. He is God's holy and chosen son, the Messiah, which literally means the anointed one. When Jesus declared at the launch of his ministry in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, the Lord, is, and it reads, the, 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 Lord, the Lord is the one because he has anointed me to proclaim freedom from prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind to set the oppressed free. Yeah. So when, when Jesus came to his ministry, God had anointed him yeah. to do certain things. Yeah. We see in the Bible when, when, when a certain people tried to do what Jesus did, yeah. they couldn't do it because they were not anointed. Amen? Yeah. 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 We see people with titles that are not anointed. Amen? Yeah. But when you are anointed, but you have no title. So, so what I'm saying is God has called you to do a specific task as in the Old Testament. But go watch this. We don't have to be covered by all, amen, because we are already been covered by the blood. In the New Testament, it is not expressed in an outward ceremony, uh, talking about immersion in the all, but through the, the sharing and the gift of the Holy Spirit, which indwells in us to give us the power to complete our task. You might not be the most talented. You might not be uh, uh, the most well-spoken. You might not... Uh, uh, Look like the part, but it doesn't matter because he, he died on the cross and the Bible said he yeah. left us something. Amen. Yeah. He left a comforter. He left something that's on the inside of yeah. Paul talks about that. Yeah. Paul said it's something on the inside of me yeah. that keeps me uh, to go. Amen. Yeah. Pa Paul says that I don't know what it is when I don't feel good, when I don't want to get up. It's something on the inside that, won't, that makes me get up and come and do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And, that, and that's what he, he left. But now that in the, uh, in the New Testament that we indwell by the Holy Spirit. All right. but, but one of the most important things to remember about anointing that it is not about us. That's right. yeah. But it is about God. Yeah. God uses the man to rub the oil or, or during the ceremony or rub the oil on a believer but it's only God that can really do the anointing. Yeah. So don't think you can go somewhere and somebody has a title by the name of bishop that they can anoint you to do something. Amen. They are a man or a woman just like you. Amen. They have to receive the power of the anointing from God just like we do. So 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 when when you are anointed, it is a sign that God is using you to accomplish His will. Anointing is a sign of God's approval. And blessing, it is something that all believers should desire. Yeah. Yeah. God will never ask you to do something without providing you what you need to do. All right. All right. When the anointing is a sign of God equipping you to fulfill whatever in God's will. Mm -hmm. If God anoints you to do something, God will always make 
a way for you to do it. Let's look at our text for today. And it is a familiar text in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 13. We see our, the future king David was anointed by oil by God's prophet. That was an outward expression, but what happened inward, inwardly was far more important than the power of the Holy Spirit came upon David to equip him for the future God has for him. So just for a few minutes, let's look at the benefits of the anointing. So let's look at the definition of anointing. And it is the advantage or the profit gain from something. So in Psalms 103 and 2, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. If, if we know what benefits are, if most of us, we got jobs, we know we got insurance, we got Blue Cross, Blue Shield. I'm not talking about those benefits, amen? I'm talking about the benefits that opens a door when you're not even qualified to come into the room, amen? I'm talking about benefits to someone who doesn't have the education to go somewhere and do something, but God still makes room for them, amen? That's the benefits I'm talking about. What advantage does anointing gives us? Watch this. The first one is that the anointing gives you favor. All right. How did it give you favor? We look in uh, First Samuel chapter sixteen. We look at. We know that that uh, David was a a, a running little boy that was in the field tending to the sheep. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And at this time, while uh, they were looking for the new king, and Saul had and God had disowned Saul, so he he sent uh, Samuel to go look. For the next king, amen. And we know the story that he went before all of David's brothers. Yeah. They looked good, they, they they looked the part, but God did not choose them. Yeah. He chose the one that was sitting out in the field tending to the sheep, amen. Yeah. Because yeah. watch it, because the, 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 the anointing gave David favor when David wasn't even in the lineup, amen. Yeah. So 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 what I'm saying is look look what it says in uh first first Samuel chapter 18, verse 21 and 22. I'm sorry. Chapter 16 and uh, 18, 21 and 22. It reads this, watch this. Saul sent to Jesse saying, let David now stand before me for he has found favor in my sight. So, so what I'm saying is that the, the one of the benefits that the anointing gives you, that it gives you favor because David was out in the field, but the king, amen, he, he called for David, amen, the one who wasn't qualified, the one who didn't have, who didn't look, the part he said that you find favor in my sight. So, so what I'm saying, the anointing can bring you favor. David went from being the last one chosen to right. by Samuel, or by being anointed by Samuel, from working in the field, tending to the sheep, uh, from being the king's armor bearer. Yeah, yeah, let, yeah. let me make that a little plain. They, David went from the mail room to the boardroom. Amen. Yeah. They, David, they watch this. They, David, he, he went from tending to the sheep. To being in the palace, amen. He, he went from sleeping in, in, in a shack to going to, to the mansion, amen. Because anointing can bring you favor in your life. We, we watch this. Uh, he, tell, he, he, he told uh, that he said, please let him stand before me. The king is asking for uh, permission. So you mean to tell me this boy who was out in the field tending to dirty, nasty sheep, the king had to come and ask permission for him to come to the kingdom. So, so that, that should have been your shadow moment right there because let me tell you this, that the this boy was out in the field working into nasty sheep, but the king who was the head of the whole nation came and asked for his permission for him to be able to come to the palace. So what I'm saying is it doesn't matter where you are in your life. If God has favor on your life and he anoints you to do something, he will come and reach you. It don't matter if you come from the project. It don't matter what you are. It don't matter your people. It don't matter what school you go to. It don't matter what, how many clothes you have in your closet. God will set you where he wants you to be. But favor from the anointing can put you in a room where your degree can't get you in. Favor can open the door to put you in places that you don't belong. Because if, it, because if your resume didn't look right, your background check didn't look right, your credit wasn't good, on the computer screen they looked up and, and they looked at your qualifications and you did not meet any other qualifications, but God still anointed you to be in that position. God gives you favor 
when you have favor, and watch this, this, when God gives you favor, your favor gives you the sky is the limit. Watch what, look what he says in Matthew chapter 6, 33. Well, what, what do you have to do to get that favor? Watch this. He said, but seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm talking about favor. Well, here's a side note. Watch this. Here's a side note. Don't confuse your anointing with your gifts or your talents. No, no, no matter how naturally gifted and how easy things may seem to come to you, never get to the point that you think you are doing things by yourself. We get to the point where, where we think that we have done it all by ourselves. I went to school. I did the work. So that's how I got the job. I work hard every day. I work the overtime. That's how I can afford this house. I I, I, I went to the store and bought that suit. That, that's how I look so good. I, 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 I've done all these things myself, but we get to the point where we give God no credit for what he has done. Amen? And, and, and you, wonder, we, you, you wonder why God sometimes shuts the door on you because you don't want to give God his credit. Amen? Your, your talents didn't get you where you are. I'm sorry to bust your bubble today, but God, God, God got you where you are. Amen. God got you that job. God got you that position. God got you uh, where you are right now. God got you in those feet. God got you to be the CEO. God started that business. You didn't do none of that. You was just a vessel that he used to do it. Why? Because he wanted to show somebody else what he can do. Amen. You was just the one he used. You, you, you wasn't the most gifted one. You were just the one that he, he said, I'm going to use them for, for my example. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use them to, 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 to let Brother Al know that I'm able. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to use uh, uh, Brother Moses to let uh, Deacon Sneed know that, that I can still do it. Amen. That it don't matter how old you are. It don't matter how young you are. But if you have favor on your life, God can do amazing things. The second benefit, the second benefit, in chapter 17, verse 28 and 29, look, look what it reads. Look what it reads in verse 28 and 29, chapter 17. It says, now Elab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to, to the men, and Elab's anger burned against David. And he said, why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know, I know uh, your innocent watch says that means I know your, your attitude and, 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 and you wicked, uh, the wickedness in your heart. For you have come down in order to see the battle. And look what David said in verse 29. But David said, what have I done now? Was it not just a question? That, that, watch this. That the second benefit is your anointing will cause some people to be threatened by you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 What, what, Haters, we, we, we all, I, I'll tell you now, I want some haters, amen? Because I, I, I want some haters. I, I want God, I want some haters to hate on me because that means God is using me in a certain way, amen? That means I'm doing something right. If somebody hating on me, I ain't never done nothing to them, I ain't never said nothing to them, I'm doing something right, amen? So if you got haters, don't don't get discouraged. Start praising God, amen? Because you, you're doing something right. He, they, David, watch this, David heard about, it was a reward for uh, defeating the lion. In verse 25, David inquires about the reward. Verse 26, David inquires about the reward again. But in verse 28, David's older brother gets upset yeah. because David is motivated to kill the giant because all the other men were afraid to face the giant. Yeah. So, so, so your anointing will cause some people to be threatened by you yeah. because you're not afraid to stand up and do something, amen? Because you're not afraid to, to go forward with what God calls you to do. Some folks gonna hate on you. His brother was hating on him because he said, you know what? I got the talent to go defeat this 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 giant because God gave it to me. Amen. Yeah. So you, you can't worry about what haters say. Even his own family hated on him. Watch this. That that don't watch this. Sometimes folks gonna hate on you because they, they see what's in you. Yeah. yeah. They, they they see that you motivated because you're doing something right. You headed in the right direction because they didn't have the same courage to step out on faith and do what God called them to do. They, they want to talk about you. Yeah. They want to look at you funny. Mm -hmm. It don't take all that. You don't have to do all that. But if God called me to do something, it takes all that. Amen. Yeah. I'm going to put in the effort. 
I know it might hurt your feelings and it might upset you. The word anoints means to be set apart. And it lets me know that everybody is not going to always agree with what God has for me to do. Or maybe David's brother was still upset about being passed over in chapter 16. Some folks don't forget your past. He, he told David, ain't you supposed to be tending to the sheep? What, what you up here for? Why, why are you up here uh, talking about when you want to fight the battle? You was left in the field. But the whole time he didn't know that God had already anointed him. Amen. You, right now you might be still in the field and still be anointed. Amen. You might be still tending to the nasty sheep, but God got a plan for you. Amen. Because he's already anointed you because his brother was upset. Well, oh, I know your nasty attitude. I, I, what you up here for? You, ain't you supposed to be who, who watching the sheep? Who supposed to be doing this? Why, well, why you ain't there? The whole time God had already anointed. Look what David said in 29. What, man, what have I done now? So that lets me know that wasn't the first time he said something to him. Amen. Man, what have I done now? I ain't done nothing to you. I've come down here because that's what God has called me to be. Sometimes you just got to call a spade a spade. Sometimes you got to tell folks, I don't need you coming to my face telling me that I know it might not be the right thing, correct thing to do. Sometimes you tell I, I, I know what you're saying, but I know what God has already told you to do. Sometimes when you walk with God, you got to walk against the grain. Sometimes when you walk with God, you don't have to walk against, go against folks who don't like you, folks who think you're doing too much, folks think you always got an opinion, folks think you're better than them, but you have to trust in God because God has a doing that you already. Now watch this. God, God, watch this. Uh, to, to be anointed, or sometimes God will remove some people from your life. Yeah, yeah. Because why? God heard the conversation that you didn't hear. Yeah. God said, I'm going to rule them out your life because you don't even hear how they're talking about you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to rule them out your life because you don't even know how they call Sister Mary out the church talking about you. Yeah. I, I'm going to remove them out your life because watch this. Uh, don't, don't be surprised when you have prayed for protection from your enemies and, 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 and you ask God to remove folks out your life and he start removing some friends. Yeah. Let me say that again. God, God, God you, you didn't pray for God to God move these folks out of my life who just don't like me, who, who ain't good for me, and your, your, it's just your best friend. Yeah. 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 Because your best friend is the one hating on you, amen? Yeah. Because see, they, God heard the conversation that you did not hear. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Watch this the third benefit. The third benefit. The anointing gives you the confidence to convince your critics. Yeah. Yeah. David was well aware that the strength he had to kill the bear and the lion was not his own. Mm -hmm. But it was the strength of God within him. Mm -hmm. look, at, look at look at verse. Look at verse. Uh what am I? All right, verse 23. Verse 33 in chapter 17. Then Saul said to David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him, for you are both a youth while, you, while he has been a warrior from his youth. Yeah. But David said to Saul, your servant was tending to his father's sheep when a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock. Yeah. I went out after him and attacked him and rescued it from the mouth. And when it arose against me, I seized him, and he heard and struck him and killed him. So the, the anointing gives you confidence and gives you confidence to convince your critics. Yeah. Yeah. David believed that God would be with him in the fight to fight the lion. So David is confident that it will convince Saul. Yeah. Saul told him when he came to fight the lion, he told him that you think. This, you, you little boy, you think you can come and fight against this giant. Mm. You think you can come and fight against him while you were a child, he was out in the battlefield fighting. Mm. And you think that you can, can uh, and kill him? Saul had no confidence in David until David starts to, starts to speak in verse 37. Yeah. Well, Saul, Saul tells David, go ahead and do it. So he realized that the anointing was upon David. He knew on the anointing that David could do miraculous things. Right. So the anointing gives you confidence to convince your critics. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is the whole time Saul is saying you can't do something, David told him, why you tell me what I can't do something, I've already done it. Amen. Yeah. While, while I was tending to the sheep, when I was in my low spot, that a lion and a bird came in and tried to kill the sheep. 
And what did I do? I killed the lion. Yeah. So that was already practice for me to be able to handle the giant. Amen? Yeah. So the things that you're going through, the battles that you're dealing with in life right now, God is preparing you for what he's already anointed you for. Amen? So, so don't worry about what folks think and what folks say. That the anointing gives you the confidence to convince your critics. Okay. Because folks don't talk about you. They don't look at you funny. But God has already been preparing you for something that he wants you to carry out. Watch yeah. it. Folks going to doubt you. They're going to doubt the power of the anointing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. that, that, that was a movie uh, back in the late 2000s. Late in the late 2000s by by the name of, of The Replacements. Mm. It, it was an old football movie yeah. by the name called The Replacements. Mm. And, and, and it was simply a movie where, where uh, uh, the, 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 the players they, uh, that they drafted, that they went on strike. Mm. Why did they go on strike? They go on strike because the money ain't right. They go on strike because things are not happening the way they think it should happen. Mm. So, so we understand that these players were the God-gifted players that the, that the owner wanted, amen? Yeah. He wanted those players. So so what happened was that that when when, when the, the, the real players went on strike, they had to bring in some replacements. Yeah. They, they had to go find some folk who who, yeah. who wasn't that talented. Yeah. They had to go find some folk who couldn't catch that good. Yeah. They had to find some folk who, who couldn't run that fast, who couldn't yeah. kick. Uh, uh, and, and, and they had, what's watch this. And, and when they did that, they still put them in the same uniforms as the gifted players, amen. Oh, yeah. But 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 now that the, it's, it's game time, amen. And, and 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 the replacements have to go on the field and, and compete against the other real players, amen. Yeah. They look nice in their uniforms. They they look like they can they can play football, amen. They look like they can run, but when they got on the field, the product didn't add up, amen. So 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 the owner came to the coach got frustrated. He said, look, you. You got to be out here coaching these, these shrubs. You got to be out here coaching these replacements. I need the real players, amen? I, I, I need you to bring the original players back because let me tell you something. You can dress something up, amen, but it's not the original thing. It's not, you, you can, you, people try to dress up, but watch this. That, that the owner said that, that okay, I'm going to bring the, the original players back because for, he brought them back for a reason because they didn't have the God gift and talent. That, that, that God had gained them to do what he called them to do, amen? Yeah. So you, you can see some folks that act like they want to be in your place, amen? Yeah. They might be able to dress like you and talk like you, act like you, but they only replace amen? Yeah. Yeah. Because when God has given you the anointing, amen, God is going to use your talents and your gift that he has placed before you. So we have to understand that God will anoint you to do some things. But, but what did God say in, uh, in, in Isaiah 53? God promises that a substitute will come to bear the sins of mankind. So, so that tells me and it lets me know that I don't have to settle for a substitute, amen? I don't have to settle for a replacement because the price has already been paid, amen? You just have to have your mind made up. And, and, and the Bible tells me as I get ready to close that, in other words, that, that, that God that you have to give God the glory. Come on, Justin, yeah. Lord, close it out. That, that you have to give God the glory. That, that the anointing does some things. Amen? Yeah. That the anointing gives yeah. you favor. That the anointing is going to make you have haters. That the anointing gives you confidence yeah. to convince your critics. Amen? Yeah. But in other words, that God, this is how God works. That God doesn't demonstrate glory by getting getting greatness out of greatness. Amen? God, does, God demonstrates his glory by drawing greatness out of your weakness. Amen? Let me say that again. God demonstrates his glory by drawing greatness out of your weakness. God doesn't get glory by letting life have life. He gets glory by finding death and raising it to life. Amen? How many times have we seen God come in the midst and raise something from the dead? Amen? Lazarus was dead. Amen? His sisters were crying. His, his sisters, what did he tell? They told Jesus, you should have came earlier, but it don't matter when he came because he is the one who can give your life. Amen? God shared in Genesis with, 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 he started Genesis with nothing in all creation because God is great at taking a little and turning it into a lot. So I tell somebody today, maybe you feel like you don't have nothing to offer to the kingdom of God, but if you don't have nothing, God knows how to work with your little bit. Amen. If, if you can't sing, maybe you can be an usher. Amen. Maybe you don't want to be an usher. Maybe you, you can work the parking lot ministry. Maybe if you don't want to do that, you can just bring pastor some water. Amen. Everybody has a part in the kingdom, amen? Because God is great at taking a little and turning it into
do a lot. So don't worry if you don't have much to offer God. You in the right place. Because the anointing has its benefits. Amen. And I'm glad that God chose me. Amen. God decided that he would use me to preach his word. Amen. God has allowed me to come from the pews to the pulpit. Amen. And I'm glad that I am going to serve him on today. Amen. God anointed me to do some, some things. Amen. And I'm going to stand as long as God wants me to stand. I don't know who I'm talking to today. Maybe you feel like you ain't living up to what God called you to do. Maybe you got trouble in your home. Maybe you got trouble on your job. Maybe you got trouble in your marriage. But God is doing something great in you. Amen. He just want to see if you're going to fight through the struggle. Amen. He just want to see if you're going to fight through the illness. Amen. He just want to see if you're going to fight through the financial problems. Amen. He just want to see if you're going to fight when your kids acting crazy. Because God, if he anointed you, he took you from here and brought you here. Amen. So that means he has a will and a place for your life. Amen. And I'm glad today. Amen. Because I know God has been great. Amen. I'm glad today because I know God has been good. Amen. I'm glad today because I know God saw fit for me even when I didn't act right. Amen. Even when I didn't say the right things. Amen. Even when I looked at somebody funny. Amen. Even when I said some words I wasn't supposed to say. Amen. When I drunk some stuff I wasn't supposed to drink. God still saw fit. Amen. And God would use me to take his kingdom to another level. Amen. And when God can use me, a little pigeon told the boy, from each one, he can use me. It's benefits when you have anointing on your life. Benefits to give you favor in the midst of folks. Who did he want you to make?
He has anointed you to do something. But you're sitting in the pews and you're sitting at home. Now you want to get out of bed. It's a shame. But we serve a God with second chances. If you don't know God in parts of your sins, God, before you can work, you got to have a relationship with Him. Before you can be anointed, God wants you to have a relationship with Him. And that's you today. This is your time. This is your chance. If you need prayer, this is your time. You need somebody to agree with you. You've been dealing with your anointing. You've been, you've been struggling with it. You need somebody to pray with you. This is your time. God has appointed this time for you.
me I I will follow where he leads me I I will follow about the anointing. Amen. Amen. Regardless of what other people think or say about you, as long as you got the anointing of God, you can make it. Amen. I'm going by something I know. Amen. 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 You can't worry about what people think about you. You can't worry about what people say about you. You can't worry about how people look at you. But long as you know that you know, yeah. I better say that again. Long as you know that you know that God is on your side, you can make it. You can make it. Amen. Amen. And we just thank God. Amen for sending Pastor Reed. It's a oh Lord. I guess somebody must be talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> amen. Amen. That's a sneeze. Amen. That's a sneeze. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. And we just thank God for everybody. Amen. Amen. That's here. Amen. I, I, I believe that you did come here to have church this morning. Amen. 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 And, and I don't know about you, but I came expecting. Amen. Amen. You, you know, when you come to God's house, you ought to come expecting for, for the movement of God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Say, God, I, I don't know how you're going to move, but I know you're going to move. And Lord, I, I'm expecting for a word. And we thank God for the word this amen, morning. Amen. amen. Now, I was kind of weak, amen, sitting over there. But as, a, as the word went forward, I thought getting a little better, amen. I, I don't know what it wasn't. Since, since, since my heart, it wasn't no vitamins that I took this morning. Amen. 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 But as, as the word started going forward, amen, I thought getting a little better, amen. And all of a sudden, my feet started tinkling a little bit, amen. Start patting my feet, amen. And then I got to stand up and say, Come on, preacher, preach. Amen. So we just thank God and, and we just are going to ask Sister, amen, Van Cook to come on. And while she's coming, we want to remind you about old next Sunday. All those who believe in the St. John Temple praise. I don't know why we might get to acting up to bring it, amen. <laughs> but on next Sunday, all roads. Our roads would be the St. John Temple praise. We're going to have a road sound reunion. Amen. 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 So you better come here to get a seat. I think a lot of those roads. Amen. 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 So we're looking forward to so them on next Sunday. Amen. They, they are talented and family. Besides St. John's choir saying, Amen. The road sound choir is going to sing. Amen. So we're at this time going to have our announcements. Amen. 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 Good morning to our, our pastor, Pastor Cunningham, Lady Deborah, ministers, members, visitors, and friends. These are our mo our morning announcements as of Sunday. August the 27th. Special announcement. The St. John MBC Temple Praise Pop Up Community Garage Sale will be October 14, Saturday night from 9 to 1 p.m. Amen. Amen. The sale asking for a donation of $30. We'll grant you a space on the parking lot to sell, sell your items. All right. Yeah. Family and friends, church members, vendors, and church in the community are welcome. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Put on your save today. Amen. All right. On this coming Monday evening at 7 p.m., 
There will be women ministry and men's ministry here at the church at 7 p.m. We ask everyone to be on time at 7 p.m. Also on Wednesday at 6 p.m. there will be prayer. Prayer, and then on 6.30 to 7.30, there will be interact Bible study. Anyone need the conference call, you can see us out of the church or look on the church website. Also, Wednesday at 7.30, there will be choir rehearsal, inspiration choir rehearsal, and Brother Al would like to meet with all choir members immediately after morning service. Also, on Saturday at 1 p.m., there's intercession prayer, and the, also the number is on the website for intercession prayer. At this time, if we have any visitors with us this morning, we'd like to stand your heart. Welcome. Feel free, feel free to come by St. John anytime. Our doors is open. Our church motto is, we are a church that's large enough to serve you, yet small enough to need you. We'd like to say that you are welcome. Amen. This concludes our morning announcements. Sister Cook is an announcement clerk. Sister Coleman is a system uh, announcement clerk. And our pastor, Pastor C. Cunningham. Amen. 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 And I'd like to give you the information on our worship and giving. Amen. Way to give. Our cash out, dollar sign, St. John, T.O.P. 3. A giver file, St. John Baptist Church. Uh, U.S. Mail, St. John NBC Temple of Praise. P.O. Box 50337, Forward, Texas, 76105. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. 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 We'd like to have Wilson to stand. Amen. 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 Is, that, is that beer over there? Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> glad to see you, Sister Bureau. Amen. Amen. we just glad to have everyone out this morning. But I want to make this announcement that, um, come on, Brother Moses. Amen. In uh, October, the last Sunday in October, amen, that's uh, going to be Harvest uh, Sunday. Amen. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to ask each member, amen, to pray about it. And we want you to, to sow your best seed. Amen. 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 Your best seed on that fourth Sunday in October. Amen. We know that God been good to you. Amen. I don't know about you, but God brought me a long way. Amen. 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 So you pray about it. Amen. Because this is a good ground at St. John. Amen. 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 And we want you to sow your best seed. Amen. 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 So pray about it. And on that fourth Sunday, we're going to have a basket here. Amen. And we want you to sow your best seed. Because that's going to be harvest month. Amen. Amen. So you might want to start saving now. So the Lord tell you what, what he wants you to plant. Amen. Or so. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. I already know what I'm going to do. Amen. Amen. Uh, some of us might have to give us some of those Dr. Pebbles. All right. Amen. Amen. Put that, put that Dr. Pebble money to the side. Amen. Amen. But we just, because God, we, we serve a big God. Amen. We serve a big God and, and amen. And we just want God to know how much we appreciate Him. Amen. 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 So on that fourth Sunday, on the last Sunday, amen, in, in October, amen, we want to show God how we want to bless Him. Because too many times we want God to bless us. All right. I better say that we want God to bless us, but this is a good time for us to bless Him. Amen. All right, so Brother Moses and Brother Dick Saint, y'all can come on, amen. And, and um, it's time for tithes and offering. And tell us over in Malachi, I say, Will a man rob God? Yes. And then say, Yes, through tithes and offering. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, if you have 10 oranges, I'm going to do a little, do a little teaching right there. If you have 10 oranges, and all God has for one, one orange, right, yeah. and you keep the nine, I think that's pretty good. Amen. 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 If you have 10 apples, right. all he wanted is one apple, mm -hmm. and then you keep the other. 
And, and that's all God asks for us to do. Amen. Amen. Just be right with him. Amen. 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 I, I'm going to tell y'all a little secret. I, I, I believe in giving God his healing. And, and I, I've been sick, you know, these past few weeks and haven't been able to work at the funeral home. And, and I, I just had eight, eight hours. <laughs> This, this, I, mean, I just had eight hours, and I said, "Oh Lord, this this check not gonna look worth nothing. <laughs> it, it, it's waste, wasting the paper." <laughs> and Pastor Seed and him and him and Master Dick and Sharp, Amen, they all went up to some, Amen. And they said, "Well, Pastor, you know, you we got twenty four hours sick day, six hours sick, twenty four hours sick leave." I said, "What?" I said, mean, now nobody had told me that because Sister Mahogany and I said, wait a minute. <laughs> that, that was secret around here. <laughs> so I was so, so 24 and 8 is what? 32. So I get 32 hours on my check. That, that's a long distance from 8. Yeah. So, so I'm showing you how God works. Amen. Right. Amen. Give me that unexpected blessing. Yeah. Amen. All right, brother, y'all have anything y'all want to say? Thank God we have our building fund advocate up here. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Now, you remember the talk we had last yes. week? Everybody's going to do their best for the building fund. Yes. We want to we wanna get this place looking the way God wants it to look. Amen. Because even when we satisfy, God expects excellence yes. in everything He does and everything He's involved in. So, we, we have the purpose to. Please God. Amen. God said, try me. And I'm not just talking about tithing and all. And the things that he, he gives us to do down there. Like this, the word this morning. Yeah. yeah. So we have to work in the spirit of excellence. Mm -hmm. Excellence in our giving. Excellence in our loving. All of that. Amen. And especially this sanctuary. Amen. So let's just do our best. Don't take away from tithing and all, friend. That's it. Separate deal. Yeah, yeah. But I'm talking about your giving. We're blessed in our giving. Amen. 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 This is our building project. Congregation, please stand, face the wall, and come from the roof.
pray. Lord, we thank you for what you have allowed today. God, we thank you for your word that went forth. God, we thank you for your anointing. Uh, God, we thank you for um, using David as an example. Yeah. And God, as we leave this place today, God, we ask that you give us traveling grace and uh, back to our destinations. And uh, God, we just ask that you take the temple to another level, help you, Father, yeah. and, and to where you want us to be. We're just going to be faithful and do what you asked us to do. But God, as we dismiss, God, we just ask that you allow us to come back and do it all over again. And we ask this present in Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And amen.